One of the great things about SketchUp is the ability to display models with a variety of different looks, and this can express your personal style, or it can tell something about the design, whether it's pretty complete or in a conceptual stage where there's a lot of room for change. Let's take a look at some of the styles here in the Styles window. So right now I'm looking at the styles that are currently in the model, and there's only one. I'll open up this drop-down list to see different subfolders listed here. I'll go to Assorted Styles, and here's a list of style files in that subfolder. Let's just take a look at the file system here, Assorted Styles, and these are dot .style files that are stored in here. Going back to SketchUp, if all I have to do is click on one of these thumbnails to assign that style to the model. So there's quite a different look with each one of these styles. And this can express more of a conceptual look, where we have a lot of room for redesign in an ongoing process. Or we can look at a style that's more hard-edged. Each time I preview one of these styles, I'm actually adding these to my model. Click on the house icon to go to the In Model group. And you'll see that all of these styles that I just took a look at are now part of the model file. This can become a problem over time if you keep previewing styles, you're adding more and more information to your SketchUp file. So after a while, it tends to bloat the file and slow down the performance. It's a good idea to go ahead and purge unused styles, and this way you make everything much more efficient. You can also move styles from this file into another folder by using this button up here, which opens up a secondary selection pane. Now I can drag something from my model to one of these folders. If I want to put this in the Sketchy Edges folder, I could just drag that in there and drop it. And that .style file is actually copied into this subfolder. You can see it right there. Another approach is to work with collections, which are a folder full of style files. And this functionality is very similar to that found in the Components window. Styles are not two-dimensional filters assigned to the image like you might do in Photoshop. Instead, they're part of the model. That means I can go ahead and orbit around here, and everything remains displayed in this style. So I could actually build the project in this style if I so chose. However, you might find it easier to model in a pretty basic style, and then choose some of these fancier looks when it comes time for presentation. In the course of searching for a style, you might find more than one that appeals to you. I like the blueprint look of this style, but I prefer the way that the buildings look in this style. It's possible to make a hybrid style that includes characteristics from both. What you need to do is click the Mix button, and you'll see a breakdown of all of the different categories in a style. Then down below, you have the ability to search for a style, just as you did before. But now we can mix them by using the drag and drop functionality. So I'm going to locate that blue style. Here it's in the Assorted Styles folder. Now I'm going to select it here, and drag it up, and drop it on the appropriate category. Because I'm interested in the blueprint look, that has to do with the background. I'm going to drop that right here into the background settings, and the style inherited that blue color. Now I'd like to make yet another change. But this time I want to edit the existing style, so I'll click this button. Here we see in the same categories that were in the Mix button, but these control all of the information here on the page. So this is the Edge page. Here's Face, Background, watermark, and modeling. So in this case, we inherited the blue color in the background, which is what I like, but that's actually being obscured by the watermark. So I'll go to the watermark page and just toggle off the watermarks for a second. Now, I don't like that either. I like a little bit of the texture, but not all of it. I don't want to uncheck this. Now here we have several things going on. We have the underlay, which is a pattern that appears underneath the model or behind it. We have the overlay, which is the texture that we see over the geometry. And we have the border, which is this gap here between the fill and the edge of the screen. So what I'm interested in doing is getting rid of this texture here, which is obscuring the blue color. So that is the cursive underlay. I'll select it and remove it. And if we do it, it's going to be permanent. Note that undo does not work with styles. This is a very important point. So I'll say yes, and it's gone.
Another important point is that the changes that you make to a style will be lost even if you save the SketchUp file, unless you create a new style by clicking this button, or if you click this button to update this existing style with the changes that you've made. In this case, I think I'll elect to create a new style, so I'll click this button, and it gives us a name that's just based on a number. I'm just going to rename that and call it My Style, and then I'll press Return and update the style with the change which I just made to the name. So I'll click this button. Let's just go and check out what styles are in the model now. I'll click Select, click the Home button, and you'll see that we have three styles. Now I'll go ahead and purge the unused styles from the model just to make things as efficient as possible. There are two different types of edge styles in SketchUp. Those that are 100% vector based, such as this one, and those that are fundamentally based on an image scanned into the computer. They're called sketchy styles. These two are examples of sketchy styles. They're based on a scan of a brush stroke someone made with an actual marking pen or pencil or what have you. These give a more non-photorealistic look, which can be quite pleasing. To take a look at this, I'm going to go back to this vector style and then go to Edit. Go to the first button here to look at the edge settings. And you'll see a list of parameters here that control the look. Jitter kind of randomizes the lines to give it a little bit more of a hand-drawn look, but this is done with an algorithm. Endpoints are added to the lines here, here, and so on, and their thickness can be controlled with this number. Extensions are optional, and they are the portion of the line that overshoots the intersection. So if I make this 9, maybe you'll see that a little bit better. Here we're having extensions go beyond the actual geometry. Depth cue makes lines that are closer to the camera, closer to you, a little bit darker. So it gives you more of an indication of something that fades in depth. Profiles are the silhouette edges of the object and they are thicker by default. And of course you can toggle the display of edges entirely. I'll go back to the Select button and choose this other style. Go back to Edit, and here we see a different set of edge settings. We have some of the same features, but we have others which are unique to these sketchy edge styles. Here's a thumbnail of the actual scanned-in brush stroke, which is an image after all. You can control the level of detail here with this slider. And that's how many of those edges are shown. The halo gives a kind of gap at the ends of these brush strokes. The extension overshoots the lines. Depth Q does the same thing as it does in a vector style. And the profiles are the same as well. SketchUp Pro actually ships with a separate application called Style Builder that lets you build these sketchy edge styles from scratch. But you don't need to have SketchUp Pro to use them. If someone else has created a sketchy edge style, you can use it just the same in the free version of SketchUp. Every style has face settings, and these are used not just to display information, but to help you model and make selections. Let's take a look at them. I'll edit the current style and click on the second button to go to the face settings page. These are the different modes that are available with face styles. I'm sure you've already seen X-Ray, but this is the official button. I prefer just to press the X key to toggle in and out of this mode. It allows you to select edges which are obscured by faces. This first button is wireframe mode and it displays nothing but edges. This mode is actually useful if you want to make an edge selection and you don't want to have any faces in it. I can select all of those edges. Let me just show you. I'll go into shaded mode. None of the faces are selected. On the other hand, you might want to select nothing but faces. To do this, you need to temporarily go into the Edge Settings page and turn off the display of edges and profiles and then go ahead and make your selection. You'll get nothing but faces. Let me just go ahead and turn these back on. 
and I'll go back to the Face Settings page. The second button is Hidden Line Mode, and it displays everything as you would see it, so all of the hidden edges are obscured. You can see them in X-ray mode, and they're lightly grayed out. This one is grayed out a little bit, this one is doubly grayed out because it's obscured twice. Shaded mode displays everything with a solid color. Texture mode displays any photographic textures that you may have assigned with materials. And finally, monochrome mode is useful when you just want to get to the modeling basics of the geometry and you don't want to be distracted by colors or textures. In monochrome mode, you see only the front color in white and the back color in blue. You can enable transparency, but it's only visible in texture mode or in shaded mode. And what is transparent is controlled by the material that you've assigned to the faces. Transparency quality is set down here. That's all there is to it.